Welcome back. One of the questions I get asked the most often, besides why do you look like a 14 year old, is how much does it cost to start carrying a gun? In this video, we're going to break down some of the costs of getting a concealed carry setup and then some optional things you may want to consider as somebody who's trying to start doing this. Note that I only said concealed carry because open carry as a civilian is for farmers and nerds who don't know better. Let's get right into it. Okay, for the sake of this video, I'm going to imagine you are one of two people. You are either the person on a budget trying to save as much money as they can but still get a quality concealed carry setup or B, you are the buy once, cry once type and you have money for nicer things. Now, both of these setups are going to be completely serviceable. I'm not going to recommend anything that I would not use myself, but the price difference will be stark. There are only four things you actually need, in my opinion, for concealed carry. Now, the first of which is going to be the gun that you choose. For the budget consumer, you're going to be looking at a law enforcement trade-in block. That's probably the cheapest option that I would personally use. If you think there's another pistol out there that you could find for under $400 that you would trust your life with, let me know in the comments. Now, for those of you who are willing to spend a bit more money on a gun, what I really recommend doing is finding which of the modern double stack 9mm striker fired handguns fit your hand the best. Whether you plan on using this gun as little as possible just to stay competent, or if you're going to be training a lot and shooting matches, you want to have a gun that fits your hand well and that you enjoy shooting. If you're asking like, Eric, Eric, just tell me what gun to get. I don't want to make a choice. Get a Glock 19. Just buy a Glock 19. It's the most popular concealed carry handgun on the market for a reason. It works. It's reliable. Aftermarket support is fantastic. You really cannot go wrong with the Glock 19. Next up on our list is going to be the holster, of course. Now, the holster you choose is going to be dependent on where you want to carry. I personally carry appendix. You can do three o'clock, whatever floats your boat. And there's a couple different types of holsters out there, but at this point, you can break it down into these basic holsters, which are perfectly fine. This is what I'm currently carrying. It's a Tenacore Serdum 3. Or you can get what we call the sidecar style holsters. Um, this one is the T-Rex Arms sidecar. These, of course, have a spare mag carrier that is attached to the holster. If you want to carry a spare magazine, this is a great way to do it. If you already have a holster like this and you wanna add the spare magazine, you can just get a spare magazine carrier for a lot cheaper than buying the $150 sidecar holster. Now, for the budget conscious consumer, I'm not going to tell you to buy a cheap holster. Your holster should absolutely not be an afterthought. This is a piece of equipment that not only needs to be reliable and secure your firearm, but it also needs to be comfortable just like your handgun. So I believe you need to get a quality holster from a reputable company. The way you get this for cheap is by simply going on eBay or TaxSwap, any of these websites that sell a holster secondhand. And within five minutes, I was able to find absolutely insane deals. For example, I found a sidecar holster just like this one that normally costs $140. I found it for $21. Uh, that's an extreme example. You're probably gonna spend about $50 getting a name brand uh, holster secondhand. So that is what I recommend. If you can find a nice new holster for less than 50 bucks or you're currently carrying one now, leave that in the comments, let people know what it is. But personally, I'm not going to recommend anything that I have not tried myself. The two brands that I have experience with now are, of course, T-Rex Arms and then Tenacore. The third thing you're going to need is quality carry ammo for your gun. Now, your carry ammo needs to do two things. One, it needs to be absolutely reliable when you need it. And two, it needs to have excellent terminal ballistics. Now, as far as the cost of carry ammo is concerned, you're going to spend about $60 uh, to get the bare minimum carry ammo. Quality carry ammunition is going to be about $1 per round. The reason I say you need 60 is because you want at least two magazines that you can punch up to their capacity, and then you wanna have one magazine that you can shoot just to make sure it's impacting where it needs to at the range. Now, last but not least, the fourth thing you need if you're going to start carrying a gun every day is training. Now, when I say the word training, a lot of people are thinking about like a concealed carry class or something like that so they can get their permission slip from the government that says that they can exercise their right to defend themselves. No, absolutely not. If you live in one of the 23 states that still requires you to get a permit to carry, 
yes, that's something you should factor into your costs, and you're probably going to spend about $150 doing that. When I say the word training, what I really mean is putting in the time and the effort to become a genuinely competent shooter. If you're going to be carrying a gun in public every day, you need to understand how to use it well. Now, the cost of training is actually threefold. There's the class fees for whatever actual classes that you plan on taking, the ammo cost for the amount of ammo that you're going to be sending down range, and then there's also the amount of time that you're putting in. Your time is valuable too. I believe you should at least be dry firing three to four times a week, if not every day, and you should just do it for 10 to 15 minutes a day. It's much better for you to have a consistent dry fire routine where you're just putting in a couple minutes a day compared to doing it one hour every two weeks. These skills are very perishable and it's good to just get your hands on your gun and get some reps in as much as possible. As far as taking a class that's not your concealed carry class, there's several reputable instructors out there. Normally, it's going to be a two-day clinic that costs anywhere from $400 to $700. I personally do not think that you need to spend this money on a class when you're just starting out. It's going to be much more beneficial for you to take one of these classes when you have built a certain level of competency and you feel like you've hit a plateau. A good dry fire routine and a couple focused range trips will get you 80% of where you need to be in the first couple months. As far as ammo consumption goes, I believe that even if you're on a budget, you should be putting about 100 rounds down range every month. That equates to about 30 bucks if we're talking about 9 mil. That costs about as much as your Netflix membership or four coffees, however you want to think of it. Either way, 30 bucks is extremely affordable uh, per month. Now, if you're the type of person who really wants to get good and you have the time and money to do this, I believe you should be putting about 400 rounds down range per month. About 150 to 200 of that should be done at a match. There are a few better ways to figure out how to shoot well under pressure than going to a shooting competition. Figure out what USPSA club is closest to you. They're all over the United States and go shoot some matches. We'll be coming out with a video on what to expect at your first match pretty soon, so be on the lookout for that. The rest of that 400 rounds should be done at the range. You can do that in either one or two range trips per month. It's completely up to you. Okay, we've talked about the four things we need, and now there's a couple optional things that I think may be a decent investment. The first of which is a red dot sight. Now, red dot sight is currently the only extra attachment I've got on this gun. That's for a reason. The reason I recommend a red dot sight is because it enables you to shoot faster and more accurately than if you were just using iron sights. The other optional thing that I recommend you do is find a gun club that is close to you and try and get a membership there. One more optional item that I actually use myself is a everyday carry belt. Now, some of these can be gimmicky or overly stiff, but the one I use is neither of those things. I use the Agonic EDB, and I'll preface this by saying I do have a professional relationship with them, but I would not be involved with this company if I did not believe in their products. What I really like about the Agonic belt is the fact that it has what we call a placard. This is a stiff bit of Tegris that slides in with this loop right over your belt, and you can make it sit either in the front of you for appendix carry or at your side for three o'clock or nine o'clock if you're left-handed or right-handed, and it will make the part of your belt that you want to be stiff just that way. The rest of the belt stays extremely comfortable and stretchy where you want it to. The last optional item that I see a lot of people talking about is carry insurance. Now, there's several companies that offer that. I personally do not have any carry insurance, but if that's something that you really want to have, just to have you know those lawyers on speed dial in the event that you do have to shoot somebody, there's that. I cannot provide any extra context on what company you should go with or any other details on that because I do not personally use it. That is something you may want to look into further though. Okay, the final optional item is a weapon mounted light. I do not carry one anymore unless it is a very small weapon light like this. And frankly, the only reason I still carry the light on here is because that's what the holster is designed for. I do not think a weapon mounted light is necessary. We'll talk about why in another video. Okay, now we're going to add all these numbers up and see what it comes out to. I'm going to make all these price estimates uh, as large as possible so that what you actually end up spending is going to be a little bit less. For our budget list, we have the gun for $350. Again, that's our law enforcement trade-in Glock, so super cheap for the amount of value we're getting. The secondhand holster that we're getting, while being an awesome product, is going to still be super cheap, so 50 bucks there. Now, the ammo that you're going to carry, again, is gonna be 60 bucks, and then for training, that's $30 a month. So, your one-time cost to get all this gear is gonna be $460, which is really 
uh, a lot lower than I thought it would be, which is awesome. And then your monthly cost for that 100 rounds of ammo is gonna be somewhere in the ballpark of $30 per month uh, with a nine millimeter being 30 cents a round. So 460 bucks for the budget list. Now, if you get all of the optional items and get the meta carry setup that we're talking about, here's what you're looking at. For the gun, again, it's gonna be six to $700. We're going with 700 for the bigger number. So 700 there. Now your holster is going to be anywhere from 100 to $150. I said 120 as a happy medium. So we're at 820 now. Then again, your ammo is gonna be the same as the budget list. You're gonna spend 60 bucks on quality carry ammo. Your uh, carry belt that we talked about would be $80. Your red dot sight would be $525. And that brings us to a total of $1,485 to get all the gear. Now, as far as monthly costs go, you're looking at $120 a month if you're shooting 400 rounds of ammo per year. And again, that's with nine millimeter at 30 cents per round. Your gun club membership is gonna be $20. And then your carry insurance, if you go like USCCA, is gonna be $30 per month. So that brings you to $170 per month in costs. Now, just as a fun little extra exercise, I wanted to see how both of these numbers compare to what I actually spent on what I'm currently carrying. So let's break that down too. So for my gun, I paid $600 for this Glock 47, and then I paid $525 for the Trigicon SRO. So we are at $1125 for this piece. For my holster, again, this Tenacore Certum 3 costs $110. If I want to carry a spare magazine, I did grab this magazine pouch. I primarily use this for if I shoot a match from concealment and I want that reload. But this Tenacore Abdo magazine pouch costs $50. So we'll add that in. My belt, again, is the Agonic EDB. That runs $80. So when we add all of this up, we are at $13.65 for myself, which is really cool. As I said earlier in the video, we wanted to estimate liberally so that what you would actually spend is going to be a bit cheaper than what we estimated. And as you can see here, $14.85 for the meta setup is $120 more than what I personally have on my carry setup. So that's pretty cool. As far as my monthly costs go, I do not have carry insurance, so uh, I'm not spending that $30 a month, but I do have a gun membership and I'm buying ammo. My ammo costs depends on if I'm in a training season or not. Right now I'm not, so it's pretty cheap. I'm normally spending about a hundred bucks or so on ammo. If I'm really training, I'm normally shooting 1500 to 2000 rounds per month. And then that starts to add up to closer to $400 a month. Some of these numbers, especially the bigger ones may seem intimidating at first, but what I can tell you is I'm not buying all of this stuff at once. I bought the Glock and I ran it with iron sights for several weeks before I set the money aside to grab the red dot sight. And then I did get the holster shortly after because what's a gun without a holster? But past that, all of the extras just come in slowly as you set the money aside. There's no reason for you to go broke for a couple weeks just to have a setup like this. Just slowly set the money aside and you'll get there. I hope this video helped you get a better picture of what expenses you're going to be looking at as you start concealed carrying. If you spent more or less on your carry setup, let us know what it is in the comments and we'll be able to compare numbers that way. Thank you for watching and I hope this video made you a better marksman.